You're listening to the Huff and Gill Show with your host, Tyler Huff and Earl Gill on 107.9 The Fan. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another special edition of the Power Hour with Huff and Gil. Oh, yeah. What's going on, Gil? Man, I'm happy. We finally, we, we bite. I'll tell you, man. It's on. Back in action. Well, we do have a very special guest with us, none other than Eric Crocker. What's going on, E? What's good, man? Did I say that right? Is that how y'all, what's good, man? Is that how y'all <laughs> Yeah, man, you know. <laughs> so, how do you want to put it? So, Croc, man, I'm glad to have you here with us. I'm glad you're you're here with us today. It's, you know, we don't have famous people on all the time. Nah, oh, you know, yeah, not yeah. all the time. But tell some people about you because uh, I want to talk about your journey. You had an unorthodox journey to the Jets. And, uh, you know, you've helped me a lot. And I didn't realize who you were. I, I used to watch you play for the Jets. And I'm like, man, this dude played for the Jets. But, uh, but yeah, tell us about yourself. Yeah, uh, Eric Crocker. I'm from I'm from California. I'm from Stockton, California. I now reside in, in Arkansas. And uh, you know, my you said unorthodox, man, but like if you really knew, you'd be like, damn, that's hella unorthodox. But you know, I was a I struggled academically throughout high school, so I had to go the junior college route. And you know, at 18 years old, went to Delta College, ended up flunking out, uh, had my son. So now I'm just working for like the next three years, just working warehouse jobs, uh, uh, shoot, everything, babies are us, uh, I mean, hidden licks, anything, right? And, you know, my best friend, you know, my brother, you know what I'm saying? He he had went to jail for a couple years. And when he got out, he was like, man, we need to be playing ball. So that was how I got back in, into going to junior college at the age of 21. Damn near about to be 22. And uh, I balled out from there and ended up earning a scholarship. So that was how I initially kind of ended up going to UAM. I had I had an offer. My time clock was all messed up. So I couldn't go to some of the D1s that were recruiting me. And I had to go more. Or if I if I did, I would only have one year to play. And I'm like, man, I don't know, like, you know, just one year because, you know, you want to learn and all that type of stuff. So um, I ended up looking at my options. There was some D2s in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, up north, like uh, Dakota, like North Dakota, South Dakota. I ended up picking UAM. Uh, out in Monticello and uh, and yeah from there I just uh, I had an opportunity to play I played two years there was up and down as a as a junior just trying to get acclimated to being somewhere different different coaching styles my senior year I did extremely well was you know all conference all that and I ended up going to the arena league and then from the arena league that was how I got to the Jets and uh, you know I had my NFL time there 2013 and then, uh, shoot, after I was finally released, and, you know, we'll probably dive into kind of like the business side of the NFL, but, you know, we can talk about that. But when I was released, uh, I ended up being the number one overall pick in, in the arena draft. And, you know, I balled out and you know, went and made some money, played with Sabercats, won a, won a arena bowl championship, you feel me? And, uh, and yeah, so that that's, I mean, I know I said a lot, but that's kind of, if y'all, whatever y'all want to dive into, we can dive into all that. I'm an open book about everything. I feel like people can learn from a lot of different things I've, I've been through in life, but that's kind of a, just kind of a brief uh, rundown. So I know you as being a 49ers insider. Like you <laughs> are, come on now. I was, yeah. listen, I was in them rooms when you, you didn't necessarily tell me to be quiet, but I realized you were doing something serious about a prop. And I'm like, wait, what is he doing? Yeah. You were, you were, he was doing a, uh, it was some breaking news that happened when we were traveling to Dallas. I was, uh, I was in the front. He was in the very back. And he was like, man, I got to do this. Like, wait a minute. Oh, it's mandatory. Yeah, sir. So what is it like to be a, person that people go to for information about the 49ers probably a team you grew up you say you're from the left coast love them right i know you do you know loving the 49ers and i think that you know there's good and bad with it one the 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 bad is i don't want to say bad i think it comes to me kind of naturally and easy and i think that's why i've been able to build such a following talking about the 49ers but to have kind of this non-objective uh perspective on what's going on with the team right because a lot of people that love the 49ers as much as I do and big fans, it's hard for them to kind of remove that fandom and give a 
a knowledgeable, educational type response to whatever it is that they're seeing. So uh, that part was something I feel like came natural, but it definitely wasn't something I was expecting. A lot of it came from when I was done playing, it's like, all right, what do I do now? And I knew I wanted to get into coaching and whatnot, but I had some buddies kind of reach out to me and ask me to come on their YouTube channel. And from there, you know, I would come on, I would pop in every once in a while and just talk about things I'm seeing. Then I started doing, and we see it all over now, but back then I promise you didn't see it at all where people break down clips, right? Like we see that everywhere now, but when I first started doing it, you didn't see it at all. So what I would do is, and first it was just kind of 49er stuff where I would like point to a cornerback and describe exactly what I'm seeing. And I break it down exactly. Hey, this is exactly why it happened. And people are like, damn, this is show me more. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then went from that to, I started doing that with guys at the uh, senior bowl, right? Like, so senior bowl week, I'd hold my camera to the, to the TV and I would see a clip, I would record it. And I would talk about, you know, hey man, like, you know, this is why you don't want a two hand press because- but you want on the TV at the senior bowl to being on the sidelines now? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, I would be at home, I would record it from my from TV on my phone. And then, you know, I did all that. So then now, yeah, I got, you know, I'm credentialed to the senior bowl and, and everything. Right. Like, all that stuff's cool. But I think a lot of it, it wasn't something I planned. I think yeah. now everybody, you know, it's like, oh, they want to plan this or they want to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, everything has like this money um, amount of dollars attached to it. And they want to do things to, to monetize. But when I got into a lot of this, it was just because I'm just hella passionate about football. I love I love football. I love, uh, you know, the, the process of it. And I felt like, man, you know, people like this, I'm just going to put out just content. And I just did it. And I mean, I'm talking about sometimes hours of stuff and wasn't expecting any money in return. So that was kind of how I got started with that. And next thing you know, I mean, shoot, I'm a credentialed member of the San Francisco 49ers media, which is, you know, crazy to me. I'm on, I'm in I'm in the media booth during games. I'm on the sidelines during training camp. I know people looking at me, cause you know, I'm tatted up and stuff, hands, legs, arms, everything. They looking like, man, how does they go on the sideline? Like, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> the players grew to like me. Like a lot of them follow me and stuff, feel me? Uh, around the league, not just 49ers. I mean, I got, you know, shoot. Uh, uh, Trayvon Diggs, you know, Cowboy, you know, he followed me. Like, you know, I got a lot of that now. So uh, it's been crazy the way it's taken out off, but I think people just kind of respect my perspective, to be honest. So I knew it was real. There's three instances I knew it was real. <laughs> There's the first one happened uh, when we were in at SMU at the camp and the coaches didn't want to talk to me, but they saw I was with you. So, talk to you. Boy, boy, and I it's some big name coaches now, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that are SEC defensive back coaches, yeah. <clears throat> Darcel. But I ain't gonna keep, going. I ain't gonna say too many more names <laughs> besides that. You know, I'm mad at him about that. You know, Eric Crocker, man, you need to be talking to me. Yeah. But uh, that instance, do you remember what Nagy said about you on the yeah, internet? Nagy, uh, I, I don't remember, but you know, Nagy. Again, I think that's somebody else that really respects, you know, the way I see the game. And um, he he told this chick, Lin Lindsay Rhodes, uh, she's been on NFL Network. She has a big podcast and everything. And she reached out to him and was like, hey, you know, who should I get for, you know, to talk about draft prospects, these defensive backs? And Nagy was like, Eric Crocker. So, you know, she got me on. I've been on twice with her now, two years in a row. And so I, I at the very least know Nagy, you know, he respects my, my, my content that I put out. Bro, he does the inviting to the to the senior ball. When he yeah, said, yeah. "If Crocker likes you, then I like you," I was like, "Wait a minute, Crocker going to start liking some wood dark side too." <laughs> that was the second time. The third time when there's a really respected DB trainer in Dallas. I'm not gonna say his name because we already clipped him last time. He got kind of mad, said he's gonna pull up on me and Tyler. Oh you, no! Yeah, but we said his we said his government name, but he said. If Crocker stamped you, then I stamp you. And I was like, wow. Like, that got a kid to offer a little bit. I was like, whoa. So that's when I knew, like, man, Crocker really, besides the meme and you going viral about the no uh, wristband, because we need to talk about that because you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. Tell me about it. Why you don't like DBs with no, glove, with no gloves? I just, you know, I mean, part of it is just being funny, right? When I see something like that, I don't expect it to go like viral. Like, I, I, 
I have tweets that, and not to toot my own horn, man, but I just got yeah, stuff that goes viral. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what's going to go viral, what's going to take off, what's not. You feel me? Because sometimes I think there's a fire ass uh, tweet I put out there or a video or a clip, and they don't get much love. Then there's something else, and they get like a million views. And it's like, damn, how is this getting a million views? Like this little clip. So I never know. But that one, I was kind of just being funny, but I wasn't. Because I'm like, man, you a DB. I get it if it's raining or something and you're just out there and you have nothing on, but you just don't see that. And it's hella weird. Like you, you maybe see like a freshman in high school that, you know, no he, he don't got nobody to tell him. So he got the Nike sharks on. He got his, his, his the team issued socks pulled all the way up. You know what I'm saying? No, no wristband, no glove, no tape on his fingers, no nothing. And I'm all for it. I've, I, every time it pops up, it, it pops up all the time. So every time yeah. that big, that picture pops up somewhere and, and people that. start it starts floating around all these different little media uh, social no, media outlets, it. I get tagged in it and I see what people say and they're like, oh no, Sean Taylor. I'm like, dude, read the tweet. I said this dude got no wristbands, no sleeves, no tape on his fingers, like something, right? No gloves, he got nothing on. He's just bare arms and he's indoors. Like you indoors <laughs> with all this. So and people, oh well, Sean Taylor. I'm like, dude, you can't find a picture of Sean Taylor where he has absolutely nothing on. He gonna have some tape on his fingers. He gonna have some tape on his wrist. He gonna have something. So when you see somebody out there just butt naked like that, I'm like, bro, that's, you You a different kind of cat. <laughs> you got something like, when you do you that. You look at them and it says scrub just when you see that, cause a lot of people, nah, they scrub. So I'm not gonna say scrub, cause I, I know, you know, to just get to the lead, you know what I'm saying? You you gotta be it's solid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta be solid to even, so I don't ever go that far. I'm just like, no I wouldn't play you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, and, and then that, in that picture you talking about, I said that if I was a referee, I'd throw a flag on him just cause. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But um, this is just me being funny. And I, I guess people just ended up thinking it was funny too, I guess. So one more thing. I got a couple bombs to pick with you. All right, so. That sounds personal. Yeah, no, crop my guy, crop my guy. Crop me and crop locked in. So uh, you, you, you posted a photo of a UFC player one time. And you, you ripped him up about it. <laughs> what did he have on white shoes? The only player that ever from USC to wear white shoes? Or you said like, you gotta be yeah. cold. No, USC, they don't wear white cleats. Yeah, They wear black cleats. You go back, Reggie Bush, Lindell White, all them. I mean, it's a tradition. It's like, it's like Penn State. Penn State, it don't matter if they got their all whites on, it don't matter if they got their blue tops with the white pants, it don't matter what they got on, they got on black cleats. Alabama, same thing. No matter what combination of uniforms they got on, they got on black cleats. Why the hell are you at USC? Y'all wear black same. cleats. And 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 you got on white cleats. I had never seen that before at USC. I'm like, that's why they sorry. Cause they letting stuff like that get 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 uh get away. You letting dudes get away with wearing the white cleats, you can't do that at USC. Nah, that ain't swag. That's funny. Since we're talking about DBs, is, do you think playing DB is the hardest position in football? We got a lot of people say that. That's a valid statement. Yeah, and it gets harder, obviously, like the higher up levels you, you go. And you have a lot of people that try to critique defensive backs. And again, that's why I got into putting my phone up to the screen and recording it, you know, back in the day. Now I got all the stuff on the computer and I can, you know, make it look all cleaner. But I got into that because people act What's like, that? oh, it's just so simple. Oh, you, you, you're impressed. You know, get hands on. Right, like you gotta get hands on. You're lined up in press. If you're not gonna get hands on, then get back. And I'm like, dude, it is not that simple. Maybe when you were playing in goddamn sixth grade, seventh grade, you could just line up and get hands on somebody. But the higher up levels you get, ideally, and I always use the word ideally. Ideally, yeah, you want to get hands on every time. Ideally, but that's not realistic. These receivers, they get paid too. And when I mean paid, I mean you know scholarships, uh, you know. Obviously paid in the NFL, right? So, it, you know, it's hard. The higher up levels, guys are quicker. They're craftier. Now, especially nowadays, more than ever, dudes are starting to work. You know, I train athletes. Dudes starting to work on these things that, you know, six years old, seven years old. You see seven-year-old technicians off the line, da, 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 you know? So it's like, Maybe you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't just easy. It's just, oh, I'm just going to get hands on a guy. Like, he's just going to let you get hands on. So I always tell people, man, you, you know, you got to press with your feet. You know, and that's that's one of my saying. Press with your feet. The feet gonna get you in position to get hands on. Um, but it is hard. 
and the higher levels you go, it's harder because they don't just line up and snap the ball. High school, they just gonna line up, snap the ball. Uh, Pop Warner, same thing. College, even college, they still kind of line up, snap the ball. There's not a whole lot of motion. But once you get to the NFL, man, they gonna throw all these different formations at you. It's gonna be bunch. You know, they gonna motion the guy away. You gotta count how many guys is to your side. Are they outside the numbers, inside the numbers? You know, what concepts do they run on this down and distance? You know, uh, it could be a sky cover three or is it a fire zone cover three? And your responsibility is different on those depending on the formation that you're playing against. So the mental part of it at the NFL level starts to get much more difficult. And on top of it being the most difficult, just because I don't know where the receiver's going, right? Like he knows where he's going. I have no idea. So I got to run and shadow this guy and follow him around wherever he's going. So that's already difficult, especially the quarterbacks in the NFL. Their timing is perfect. Their accuracy is really good, is next level. Their throwing power. I remember somebody threw a goddamn a 20 yard comeback on me. I'm like, what the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? So it just gets more difficult the higher up you go. And I think the mental side of it as well at the NFL level is more difficult. So I, I got two questions for you. Uh, since we, since you nine and gang all the way with your Vans on, okay. shout out to them Vans. Okay, Trent Williams is one of the homies. His people is some of my homies, right? Is he worth the 99 Madden grade? <laughs> Best offensive, best offensive player. He is the best offensive player. But when you say flawless victory, you think he's flawless? Like I, I do. He do things, bro, that right I, I ain't never seen an offensive lineman do. First of all, he's getting older, and it feels like he's not. He is my, it's just like he's he just the best. You know what I'm saying? And he's so athletic. For somebody as big as he, he is to move the way he, he does out in space, it's it's incredible to see but that's not even the best i mean obviously that's great but you can have guys that move well that are big or whatever his technique is just it's just easy for him is is just uh, uh, his pass sets perfect then he does this thing i ain't never seen nobody else do bro. it's like he does this thing where he you're in front of him right he's in his pass set about to get his pass set you across you and your little three-point stance or maybe you in a two-point stance, whatever right you fire off the ball. Next thing you know, you're on the ground. He does this thing where he just like, uh, uh, then you just on the ground. I ain't never seen no other lineman do it. All I see is pass set, punch, punch, you know, that type of stuff. Man, he do this thing where it's just like, it's almost like a bully just pushing your head down and then pulling your shirt off and giving you a wedgie, right? Like that is the equivalent of that. And he does it like, it, it's crazy. So he, he's just a freak, man. Like, and as clean as he is throughout games, first of all, his gear, his drip is, I mean, um, immaculate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see they started a trend, walking down the field with the bump box, like, uh, uh, you feel him and Debo, you feel me, big yeah. dog bullies. So, uh, nah, Trent's that guy, man, he's that guy. Okay, so the 49ers have a, have a history of really good quarterbacks, which is not, I mean, Joe Montana, you know, Steve Young, there's some guys over there, there's some guys over there. Uh, Alex Smith, like for people to talk what they talk, he he was okay. Like he wasn't yeah, that bad. Yeah, he was solid. So like is Jordan Love, you know Trey Lance. Oh, Trey Lance. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. Love, but no, I can see, I mean light skin, tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sorry. yeah I'm sorry. I can see. It is Trey Lance. Trey Lance is from Minnesota. North Dakota State. Yeah, North Dakota State, yeah. Okay, yeah, they played UCA and he tore him up real quick that one game. Okay. He game. didn't he didn't do game. he didn't do as well in that game throwing. But yes. once he turned it on and it was just like he ran in and he matter of fact in that game he threw his only interception in his college career, which was you know one season. So is he the answer long term in San Francisco? That's what they hope, right? I mean you, they gave up a ton yeah. of draft capital for him. I'd say this, and I was really high on him coming out, uh even before Niners took him because I've been around, you know, obviously playing, you know, being in the league with the New York Jets and seeing high draft picks and what they look like. And having a talent isn't enough to make you a good football player, right? Like that's why you can have a guy like Antonio Brown, who's a little undersized, not the fastest a guy, but he's great, right? Because his work ethic and his mindset to be the best. Uh, Richard Sherman, tall, long dude, but not the most physically gifted in the sense of, you know, 40 yard dash, but his mind and his, and, the, and almost like the pressure that he puts on himself to be great, right? Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the best 
every time I step on the field and I'm gonna prepare that way. Well, a lot of guys have a lot of talent and that talent got them to the league and it's just like, okay, like I'm gonna kind of coast on my ability as opposed to really just having that mindset of, I'm gonna be the best version that I can be. I'm gonna work relentlessly at it. I'm gonna ask questions. I'm gonna go above and beyond to become the best, right? Even if I'm not quite there yet. And everything that they were saying about Trey Lance, everything I heard, every story, every person, anybody you talk to about Trey Lance, his work ethic, uh, how he was, it's like, man, I didn't even care about where he was at when he was drafted. It was about what's up here. And he has all the ability. He has enough athleticism. He has the arm strength. He has all that. He can make all the throws. He needs to become consistent. But when you have that type of mentality, that type of work ethic, you know, they're talking about the story of him, you know, his dad, he told his dad, like, dad, I want to go to D1. And he's like, all right, well, you got to start waking me up at 5 a.m. Didn't miss a day. Woke his dad up at 5 a.m. every day to go work out. Right? So when you, you know, when you like that, where you know my talent alone isn't going to get me where I, I want to go. And it wasn't, right? He still, um, he wanted to go to Minnesota. They offered him to be a safety. He's like, no, I want to play quarterback. Went to North Dakota State. Uh, had the red had the red shirt that first year. They talked about him learning not just his playbook, but man, he's trying to learn NFL playbook too in his downtime and what they do. And just having that mindset, I'm like, that's the that's the right guy. Now, is he going to step in day one and be whatever you hope he is? Maybe not. But one one thing we've seen from him so far, and one thing that you hope you continue to see is him continue to kind of take steps forward each each uh each game each quarter yeah. right Can you continue bro. to get better and i think that's one thing we'll see throughout his first year playing one thing i want to ask you personally what was what was your inspiration like what was your, your motivation for yourself along your journey man you know it's crazy man like i, I was never that that pop warner uh legend you know what i'm saying i was never that guy that everybody was like oh he gonna make it right i think for me it was just you know never giving up, you know what I'm saying? I know I sound hella like cliche, hella cheesy, but like on some real stuff, like, you know, I done been in some situations where it would be easy to just be like, man, poor me. Or okay, this is the, this just the, this just the cards I was dealt. But for me, it was always knowing like, man, this ain't it. Like this ain't it for me, you know what I'm saying? And, and really just driving to, my competitive nature is on 10. I'm the ultimate competitor ultimate and I always felt like nobody's going to outwork me and I think that's what really helped me drive it. you know I ain't have any lofty goals of I'm going to make it to the NFL like or you know what I'm saying like that was never a goal of mine it was just maximizing the opportunities that I got you know what I'm saying once I truly understood what was at stake so uh, even if I wasn't the best athlete or whatever I, if we working out I'm not going to let you outwork me and if you do like, okay, you're not gonna outwork me tomorrow. Damn, you outwork me again? Then you are gonna outwork me Thursday. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna I'm stay at it. And I think that's really what ultimately, like, really helped me. Not just, like, you know, to make it to the league, but I think with everything that I've ever done. Hey, I, uh, I know what you're about to say, so we're gonna plug this. What's your favorite helmet to wear? Shut game. You feel me? So, Tucker uh, Petrie, do you hear my guy? What do you say? What kind? Hey, listen. I tell people all the time, it's crazy, man. They be running around with them big ass Rydell helmets on. It's like, bro, yeah. you need to get you a shut. They nice, they snug, they comfortable. They look aesthetically pleasing. You see Devontae Adams out there looking clean. Jalen Ramsey, he he wore the shut. Then all of a sudden, he, I see him last year. He switched to a, a, a Rydell speed. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? You tripping. Shut is the best, whether it's the, uh, the, the Air XP, which is this. They got the new uh, F7s. Those are mm -hmm. dope, you know what I'm saying? A little bigger, a little bulkier, it's probably safer. Probably safer than this one, which you know I wore 10 years ago. But um, shut, man, like, I, I'm like a big shut person. So that's what I always tell people, like, man, you want to look clean out there? You gotta get the shut, you gotta get the shut. Shut gang. Think about people with swag, man, food. like, you know, Cam Newton, yeah. uh, again, Devontae Adams, even Antonio Brown, like, I mean, a lot of people, where the shirt, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Joe Hayden, he one of the freshest dudes out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? They all got this right here. Shut gang. Shut gang. 
I'm gonna tag shit, man. My man Tucker a feature y'all over there. You need to make you a sports person, a spokesperson or something. Man. Absolutely. <laughs> so you yes. would be the best. He would be the best. Luckily, one. they came out with the new F7. So a lot of kids are, I think it's the F7 or L7, but the, the new one, a lot of kids are That's going true. to that. You see like Tyreek Hill wear it. Uh, you see a lot of dudes wear it. So I was so happy when they came out with that. And that was something that like this kind of younger generation, they're going to. It. Hell, Richard Sherman, he wore a shut. Pretty much, I think his rookie year, he wore a shut. And then after that, the rest of his career, he wore a Rydell. And last year, he went to a, a shut. Right, uh, his last year with Tampa Bay. I got the DM right here, man. I can show y'all. He's like, I wear that for you, crop. <laughs> From Sharon? Yeah, I got the DM in my phone. Yeah, he I know. like Sharon. He yeah, worked he out know. up there in Seattle with my, with my people up there, my homies yeah. up there. So I like Sharon a lot. Last question I got for you What's your prediction after NFC? Y'all coming after NFC? Or the Middle uh, Cowboy. <laughs> I always, I always try to remove the 49ers out of the equation, right? Because I'm a 49er fan, and as I always want what's best for them, but I don't want to come off as like a homer. So I'm going to take the Niners out of it. So let's just act like the 49ers aren't in the NFL, right? They're not, they don't exist. So excluding them, I would say, I feel like you can never count out Tom Brady because he's just, whatever he does to prepare Whatever he does to get all his players to buy in to whatever he's selling, he always gonna be in the mix. So Brady off rip with Tampa Bay, I, I can see them. Cowboys, I I feel like they're very talented. I don't think that they got better. Yeah. I remember I don't man, think you they were got better. I think they lost they lost some guys, you know, losing Amari Cooper, that doesn't help. You know, they lost some offensive linemen where they needed help. They drafted uh the kid out of Tulsa. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see how that works out but I think where they lack the most head coach I, I just don't believe in their head coach I know he did well with Green Bay you know but it's like well yeah you got Aaron Rodgers how are you going to do when you don't have Aaron Rodgers and I think Dak Prescott is very talented but uh, I just don't I don't there's something that they're missing and I don't believe like they had no business losing to the 49ers in Dallas Yeah. Right. but when you yeah. are coached kind of that way Players started playing a little undisciplined. I think they got special players. We'll see if maybe they can bring it all together, but I wouldn't bet on them. I'd probably go, I just put money down. I hate the Rams, but you know, we'll say the Rams. Uh, you know, they just have like at their core, their core unit, they're they're all those guys are elite. And when you have a quarterback as good as Matthew Stafford, and you have a head coach that's really good, like McVay, you're always gonna be in the mix. So, you know, they were you know, a few plays away from not being my Niners in the NFC Championship game. But when you got some special players like that, you're able to just make just enough plays to get you over that hump. So I say NFC Championship, exclude the Niners, exclude the Niners, which I probably wouldn't even predict the Niners there anyways when you got a, a quarterback that just hasn't played. But uh, Rams and Tampa Bay, which they played in the divisional round last year. So. We gotta bring Croc back on. Oh live. yeah, we definitely do, especially in this season or something yeah. like that. We gotta bring you back on, Croc. Oh yeah, you already know, man. You know, any any time. I, I talk for a living, so and I say this, you know, and I know we got five minutes left, but um, the the podcast game, I, I make a lot of money off of it. Well, I don't want to say a lot of money. I make good money off of it. I don't know what's a lot. You forgot, you, you, forgot you told me in Dallas that one time. I've never told nobody. Don't you remember? Yeah, but I don't even know what number I what number I said. We ain't gonna talk about it. We'll tell you. Yeah. No, just that. Don't you? What number I said? Some rackies. Like some racks. What, what's some racks though? I don't know the number, man. Ten. I don't know you make that. ten, bro. Yeah, I make more than that a month now. I know. <laughs> See, you know what I'm saying? So you know. It, I, I say that because like, this is not hard, right? But I think it's just kind of putting yourself out there. Uh, and again, I, I talked about from the beginning, recording stuff with my phone. It was never about monetization. I mean, what can this, it was just a passion of mine. And the passion of mine that I put in there, I think a lot of people, passion and knowledge, people respected that. And it, went, it turned into one thing. And that one thing turned into something else. And then, some, then you know, you get some sponsors on deck. And, you know, I was just in New York. They flew me to New York, me and my wife. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you you start to 
you you prove your value. And I think a lot of people want to well they want their money before proving their value. And I proved my value and then slowly but surely the money started coming. Okay. So now it's like, yeah, you know, but I you know, I grind. I was willing to do anything and everything, anytime, not as much anymore, you know, obviously like y'all the homies, but uh, anytime someone asked me to go on a podcast, 49ers, anytime somebody asked me to come on a radio, do a radio hit, anytime, like, oh, I'm there. Oh, you want me to call it? Okay, what time? Oh, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I was willing, I'm just gonna put myself out there as much as possible, not knowing what's gonna come from it, but I'm passionate about it, so it's whatever. And my wife was like, man, you need to start charging for this stuff. I'm like, nah, one day something can come from it. I ain't tripping, you know what I'm saying? And now it has, you know what I'm saying? And uh, even when I really started going hard, hard, like last year, it was really to fund my gym. You know, I'm building this big ass gym and it, you know, it's gonna cost me a pretty penny. And, uh, you know, I see what I signed for the construction loan and I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta pay this construction loan. So I need to make up the difference between what I was making training athletes then and how much I, was, I can make off my uh, podcast step. And at first it was just, I was just trying to make up the difference. Then eventually it was like, damn, okay. Can I cover the cost of the construction loan? Okay, damn, I did that. Okay, can I can I cover all my expenses from the gym without having one client in there, right? So if I don't have one client training, can I still pay all my bills? And then that was a goal. So earlier, uh, you asked like, what drives me? I guess that was motivates me now to make sure that you know I can take care of that, take care of the fam, and and everything's good. So uh, I do got the gym. It'll be usable probably by the end of next week or the week after that. And then um, I'm planning on having a grand opening right. September 1st. So I'm trying to have it out, make sure I got everything set up, aesthetically uh, pleasing. It's going to be real dope. There's nothing like it, uh, especially here in Southeast Arkansas, from this area to kind of like uh, Louisiana, North Louisiana, West uh, Mississippi. There ain't going to be anything like it throughout this area from here to Little Rock. So uh, this is something that I think is dope. I think it's going to be very good for the community. And uh, I really want to thank Mr. Danny Smith because he helped me along with a lot of this stuff. Shout out to Mr. Danny. Shout out to Mr. Danny. He a real one. You know what I'm saying? He a real he one. Real. You, don't find, you don't find people like that, man. But I, I've ran into a couple good folks out here in, 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 uh, in Arkansas. He's one of them. So. Absolutely. Man, probably so appreciate you joining us personally, man. Hopefully we can get you in the studio one day, man. Oh, we're gonna come to Freak Line. We're gonna come, yeah, we're gonna come out there with you. Yeah, we can think of Yeah, you already know it's good. We're gonna put Gil through a uh workout. I'm gonna pass out. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell you, I ain't gonna tell you about my boy. My boy been supposed to be working out. Like 30 minutes a day, Croc. I mean arms only. I'm trying to get like y'all. Straight bench press. That's it. That's it. <laughs> the lady told me I lost 10 pounds. We up, Croc. Hey man, you do stuff like that, you eat and just walk. Then next thing you know, after a few weeks, you turn that walk into a little jog or like an interval jog, right? Like jog for two minutes, walk for two minutes, jog for two minutes. That's gonna raise and lower your heart rate. It's gonna actually help you kind of burn some uh, calories a little faster. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take that into the game, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, mental notes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you though, man, and take it easy, man, and we'll be talking to you soon, bro. All right, appreciate, appreciate you, crop. All, All right, right man. This ain't no ESPN.